Wesley Sso qualified through the tie-break to reach the semi-finals and noted that he was looking forward to facing Grandmaster Armin Tabatabe representing a new generation of Iranian players. Tabatabe qualified as group winner after an impressive win against Anish Giri. After a few moves the position of the Queen's Gambit declined was on the board, and so opted for the exchange variation with capturing the pawn on d5. In this opening the chances are balanced. Black is usually more or less forced to use his superior activity to launch a peace attack on White's king, as the long-term chances in this opening structure favor White. It was a very positional game and on move 24, White could win a pawn, as Tabatabe wanted to stay on the c-file with his rook in order to become active. But so did not allow this. On move 35 So managed to position his queen in the center by exchanging the d and e pawns. This position was already evaluated plus 6.6 .6 for white, due to the bishop versus passive knight situation in an open end game and black's poor king safety, not to mention the one more pawn for white. So it happened that Tabatabe resigned in this position on move 43, although at first glance it looked as if he still had a resource with his passed pawn, but even with the best play it was unavoidable that black would lose his knight and thus the game. In the rematch, Tabatabe started in a must-win situation with the pawn move on d4 and after a few more moves the Nimzo Indian defense was on the board. By pinning White's knight, Black prevents the threatened e4 and seeks to inflict doubled pawns on White. White will attempt to create a pawn center and develop his pieces to prepare for an assault on the Black position. On move 23 Black played the very threatening looking move, knight to h4. Here it was not possible for white to capture either the knight or the bishop. but Tabatabe found the only move that does not lose the game, namely rook to d3. This move defended the complete attack, since the supposed win of the rook for the knight no longer worked due to the following double attack. Excitingly, after the attack was now mitigated, the game was completely won for white and was evaluated with plus 5.3. And so it was that after the exchange of queens on move 30 Wesley so resigned, as this position with plus 6.3 for white was completely lost, at least at grandmaster level. There is no quick winning move here, but in the end the two pawns cannot be stopped, the rook is too active, and the bishop pair is too strong in this position. Thus this match had to be decided in the tie break in faster time controls and at the tail of the tape one could see that Wesley So was the clear favorite. The game started as an Indian game, but Tabatabe surprised with the rare knight move on c3, the Chagoran variation. And he surprised even further when he played e4 on move 4. Only six official games show this position according to the chess.com database. With a beautiful knight maneuver, he managed to narrow down the black king very strongly already on move 12. Tabatabe was thus able to build up a respectable advantage of plus 1.7, and Wesley so said after the game that this position could almost be considered winning for white. But after he managed to trade queens, he was very happy, because he thought he was out of danger. From this point on, So, showed his deep understanding in chess and was able to improve his position step by step. When he managed to win the dangerous pawn on d6 on move 31, the game was practically over, as White was also unable to hold the a-pawn.
Finally, Tabata Bay resigned on move 63 because the pawn's superiority could no longer be stopped. In the rematch, there was a King's Indian on the board, which is a hypermodern opening, where black deliberately allows white control of the center with its pawns, with the view to subsequently challenge it. Wesley So's novelty, pawn to g4 on move 11, initiated a great offensive spectacle, which eventually led to both kings looking very vulnerable. In this position on move 25, Tabata Bay was able to gain a plus 2.0 advantage. But again, white defended very well and found a possible resource with the brilliant bishop's sacrifice on b5. And the game ended in an exciting endgame with four pawns and a knight against one pawn and a rook. But on move 46, with only a few seconds left on the clock, black made the decisive mistake by moving his knight to d5 instead of taking the pawn, which could still have resulted in a draw. After rook to b8, black resigned, because there was no longer a good way to stop the pawn from promoting. Wesley so thus reached the final. The final of the FIDE Grand Prix 2022 leg 3 was an all-American one. So, opened with the queen's pawn and the game directed to a Nimzo Indian defense. In this defense Black seeks a symmetry, active, independent counterplay. Later in the game he will try, depending on the game situation, to attack the inhibited white center directly or to achieve an attack and breakthrough on one of the two wings. On move 12 Black moved his pawn to g5 and attacked the defender of the pawn on e5. After a few sidetracks the bishop retreated to e3 and Nakamura won the pawn at the cost of an open kingside position. On move 24, white managed to penetrate the black position with his queen. And shortly afterwards he won the pawn on d5 with check and then also the pawn on b7. White now was a pawn up, but the evaluation was still 0.0. Now it was black's turn to attack, and after moving his rook to c2 and threatening mate, the rooks were traded and it was possible for black to win back the pawn. It was in this position on move 30 when both players agreed on a draw, in a completely balanced position with an evaluation of 0.0. In the rematch, Nakamura started with e4 and after a few moves the Rui Lopez opening was on the board. In this opening the theory is one of the most extensively developed of all, with some lines having been analyzed well beyond move 30. Nevertheless, white has a probability of winning of about 38%, but with the knight move to f6 Wesley so opted for the Berlin defense and thus increased the probability of a draw. And indeed, with white castling and black capturing the pawn on e4, the two were heading for an infamous draw. It was precisely in this position that Nakamura could still think about it. The rook move to e1 would mean play on, with the move to d4 it would be pretty clear that the two would take the draw. And now you can see how it comes about. Since any deviation from this position would put the other player at a slight advantage, and any further play would most likely lead to a draw anyway, a three-fold repetition is the most commonly chosen action here. With no winner in the classical games so far, the final of the FIDE Grand Prix 2022 leg 3 went into a tie-break, which started with rapid chess. Nakamura, ranked number 2 in the world by FIDE but number 1 in the live rankings, was the clear favorite. The game started with e4, e5 and knight to c3, the Vienna game. But then, with the move bishop to c4, Nakamura opted for the fault beer stanley variation or one can also say transposed to the bishop's opening. But no matter, this opening was aimed at surprising Wesley so, which it did. but it was black which played a novelty already on move 6 with pawn to b5. 
we were ready to see an entertaining match. Wesley So, who by the way is the reigning Fisher Random World Chess Champion, found his way better in this undiscovered position and was able to push White far back with the dangerous bishop move to d3. And then on move 23 he could win the pawn on e4 and led with an evaluation of plus 4.4. But Nakamura fought his way back and when he played this brilliant knight sacrifice on move 31, with the following moves, he achieved this offensive position with an advantage of plus 0.8. Wesley So now showed his defensive skills and managed to exchange almost all the pieces with the bishop moved to c8 and finally reached an even rook and pawn endgame. And actually, the game ended on move 56 with a three-fold repetition. In the rematch the Rui Lopez opening was on the board and Nakamura opted for the Berlin defense and the same variation that led to a draw in 14 moves in the game before the tiebreak. But Wesley decided to deviate and played rook to e1, which by the way also has a draw rate of 66%. On move 22, with an evaluation of plus 0.3 for white, Nakamura offered a draw, which so would probably have accepted, but since accepting a draw offer until move 30 is not allowed, they continued playing. On move 32 Nakamura played his pawn to c6 and white initially thought this was a brilliant move because it allowed the bishop to move to d8, which would have attacked white's best positioned piece, the knight on f6 and also the pawn on h4. But then he realized that this move was a big mistake, because after capturing the knight on e5 with his bishop, he was able to win a piece with a beautiful knight fork. Now with a piece up, it was only a matter of time that Wesley So would win. Nakamura fought hard and tried to come back, but finally he gave up on move 65 in this completely lost position. Congratulations to GM Wesley So for winning leg 3 of the FIDE Grand Prix and 24,000 euros. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest chess news and tournament highlight videos. Thanks for watching.